right, so we're going to dive in with a little bit of an overview of where we are and a look into also a bit of the future and where we're going. Okay. All right, so speaking of which, we've been in early access for PC, PlayStation 4. One of the things we're really proud of is pulling off cadence of weekly updates. It's definitely been tough on the team, but it's something that we thought would be the best for players and giving people some new, something fresh to look forward to every week. Uh, a big focus for us has been on the card system and continuing to take feedback in from our players, iterate on the system, make it easier to use, make it more robust, more interesting. Uh, we've also adjusted gameplay. A good example is movement speed, and a huge amount of that has been based on the sort of back and forth communication with our players, which is something that is really gratifying with the company's history with Unreal Tournament or Gears. You just didn't have that opportunity to continue doing this type of back and forth. It'd be, oh, maybe next game, and now let's do it next week. Um, we've been very much committed to rolling out new heroes as we go and keeping up a pace of every three weeks, new hero. All right. So, so, I did not see anything else. This is the <laughs> A little bit about what's new. So some okay. of the big things we're talking about now. Uh, we are announcing our open beta date, August 16th. Oh, nice. And as always, our heroes will be free. And that's something where it was really important to the team to provide that type of value to the players with the game. Everyone can participate in the game and get to enjoy what we think is one of the stickiest parts of the genre, which is great new characters. Um, and one of the things that we're also excited about is allowing people who have been part of our early access to carry over their progress, the things they've unlocked and earned. Uh, once we enter open beta. You just answered my number one question that people wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Cool. Glad you guys are excited about it. Yeah. Okay. And other stuff that's coming up soon is new hero, Chimera. Uh, he's someone that I think is a really good example of our team hitting its stride. And as we're rolling out more info about him, I think his hero kit is a, is a great sort of microcosm of all the things that we've learned as we've gone through. A lot of visibility is really synergized nicely with each other. And some of the old guys will have a chance to play. We have them up and running right outside for a solo versus AI matches, so you get to experience them for yourselves. Um, another thing that we think is a consistent sort of touchstone for Paragon is change. And building it, growing it, and adjusting it. Um, for us, we're always pleasantly surprised by how quickly people pick up on things or come up with strategies that we didn't anticipate and it gives us sort of new fodder for how we begin evolving the game week over week, month over month. Okay. Uh, one of the big focal points for the major update that we have just rolled out this week is one of the early design goals for the project was meaningful choice. For everything that you do, having something where there's not the one golden path then becomes the default right answer because that, that isn't particularly compelling. So that idea of choice, mattering, and commitment being something really important. Uh, so I'll go into that in a little more detail soon, but we think that the importance of choice is something that allows for people to build better strategies, because you can't just do everything. You have to sort of commit to a path for at least that game session, and that allows more of the metagame to evolve than theory crafting. No worries, you want to go first? No, go for it. All right. So that was my one big question. I've got some others. That was going to be one of my <laughs> questions, too. Um, so one of my questions, how is it? How difficult is it to keep coming up with champions? I know you probably have already passed that, but you're going to be doing this for how long do you plan on releasing heroes for down the line, and how difficult is it to come up with new ones, and what their style is going to be? Gotcha. So for the dev team, the plan is to do heroes indefinitely. We think it's, it's fun to build. People clearly enjoy having that variety. <laughs> So that's something we plan on carrying forward. Um, as far as the difficulty of it, it's actually, I think the, the challenge isn't so much coming up with the ideas, it's assembling the right kits. Um, so within the company, it's very open, everyone can contribute ideas, so you constantly have people, there's our core hero design team, but anyone on the project, anyone in the company can send in their ideas and, and do, or it's, oh, I've got an idea for a hero, or I've got an idea for a, a batch of abilities that I think mm -hmm. would be really interesting. So those are always flying around. We have our giant backlog of the things we want to try and build. And our hero design team then spends their time kind of sifting through, taking a look at what's in the game and what is really resonating with people. Okay. Trying to decide, out of these proposals for heroes, out of these batches of different ideas for abilities, what's the next few that we're going to go and build? Mm -hmm. And then they start the prototyping process. Okay. Um, so it's... It's difficult, but not necessarily in the ways you might anticipate. What's What's the biggest ask that you're hearing from the community that you're not able to um, give them yet? 
Uh, let's see. I think for us, a lot of it is constantly iterating on building out our, yeah, our tool set. Okay. So there's, there's the core game itself, and uh -huh. there's what we've been really happy to see is a healthy back and forth right. of people where it's not Thanks. everyone in one Sorry, direction. Uh, There'll be sort right. of other people like this and that, and that's a type of balance that we think is really healthy. Right. Uh, the things that we feel more pressure to go and do are the components that exist just to keep running a live game healthy. So, for okay. example, yeah. more robust reporting tools, right. uh, more more menu options, sliders, for example, for volume settings. Those are the things that, out of the nature of being early access, we're catching up with those and sort of implementing the features around the game uh, that help expand the experience. And that's part of what is on our path towards open beta, building more things for onboarding, more things for usability. Okay. Uh, those are the things that we want to do, and it's, it's never fast enough. As right. One big thing that are always in these type of games is balance changes. People love them, people hate them. Yeah. How do you guys try to find that perfect balance of keeping a character similar, but also having to change him because of certain buffs he has that other characters don't? Yeah, that's a big, enjoyable part of the challenge. Because you will have that, especially once a character's been out for a while, some people love it exactly the way it is, mm -hmm. don't ever want it to change. And for others, it's the, oh, why is this character so difficult, so broken? And What's been really important to us from the very beginning of rolling this out with early access is to establish the constant is change. We're going to continue iterating on the game and changing it and evolving it over time. And setting that expectation, I think, is what's important and makes that easier to go through where it's a back and forth conversation. So I think there isn't necessarily a perfect balance. And what's more important to us is a commitment to try things and try and keep the game healthy, competitive, fair. And then as we try things, we, we see, does, did this work out exactly what we planned? And if not, be willing and ready to change it. And that's part of why we spent so much time getting ready to build a pipeline where we could do something like roll out new versions of the game every week mm -hmm. and keep that. Because the last thing you'd want to do is have something that isn't quite working as intended, and then you're stuck sitting on it for months. And that's been another part that's been great about not just this console generation, but interacting with Sony, where they've been very supportive mm -hmm. of going through and saying, Right up front, guys, we're going to have a lot of changes coming through. Can you help us with getting it through the search process and getting it out to our players as soon as possible? So I'm going to hop back into this yeah, and we'll uh, jump back to change. Uh, this is a quick list of some of the things that we've just rolled out this week. And the highlight to this is going through and taking a sort of sweeping look at where we are and trying to continue tilting the game towards being the MOBA that we intended it to be. So pointing out a few things, we have reworked some of the hero abilities and that, that does engage that healthy debate with players. Uh, we changed how some of the card XP is shared among players and some of that is to take the meta of what we see and evolve it more towards where we'd like to be, where we get people interacting in different ways and having teamwork that's more strategic. <laughs> so that's some of the mentality that's behind this. Nick, you head over to the next slide. So also transition to talk a little bit more about what's coming, so a little glimpse to the future. One of the big ones that we have announced is that we are working towards the removal of travel load. And the first piece of that that we're going to be implementing in the not so distant future is a teleport system. And so the mindset for this is to give people something that does come back to the commitment and strategic choice where you don't just have that free, unlimited ability to engage at full speed and then get into a bad position, get into a bad play, and then initiate travel mode to escape. With this new system, the intent is to have you commit. And when you go in, when you're overextended, it's going to cause you problems. And that's one of the things that we think is really fundamental to how MOBAs function. And that's the intent behind you getting towards uh, the removal of travel mode. And so some of what you'll see here is we have some very early stuff that shows not final art, it's just a prototype, but it is uh, the initial prototype for our teleport system. So what you see here, those are the sort of debug selection points as you decide what target you're going to teleport to, channel it, and you zoom across the map. Oh, nice. And this is something where, for us, even in its prototype form, what we're going for here is taking advantage of the fact that the 3D, the fidelity, uh, the sort of visceral feel of rocketing across the map, and having it be something that is very purposeful and strategic. Other than the cooldown, is there, are there any limitations, as in if you're in a certain stage of battle that you're not able to teleport, or is it something that as long as you're cooldown right. and the power is active, you can use it? That's actually one of the things that we're actively prototyping back and forth and trying okay. different ways and seeing. Yeah. We have our QA team, our development team, and our competitive QA team 
focusing on all the different knobs and valves for what feels right. What, what is the most tactical and the most satisfying? So we've played with both versions of it, and that's part of what we're going through right now as we're working towards rolling this out, is just going through that cycle of play test after play test to see what feels good, and it's hitting that the sort of MOBA interactions that we really want for Paragon at this point. Uh, so some of the other stuff that we're experimenting with right now in prototype form are speed boosts based on the shadow pad, so moving out of the shadow pad and picking up some extra speed. Uh, different ways of having strategic methods of moving through the map faster. Uh, fast track is another example of something that we're trying out. And it's the idea that in different parts of the map, you'd be able to pick up speed as you move down these pathways. So you opt into that choice, but if you go through and engage and you start to get into combat, it's going to take you out of that speed. So it creates a little bit more of the sense of these are areas where people are going to interact with it a certain way, and it adds to that sort of ability for people to outthink each other. Because you don't just have, well, anywhere in the map at any time you can be in travel mode zipping around here. It's that sort of you're making a tactical decision to move fast in this spot, and other people can potentially try to ambush or exploit your own. It fits into that previous slide of commitment and meaningful choice. Okay. All right. So another item that's related to um, teleporting is this concept of drop pods. And the quick overview for this is the idea that you wouldn't necessarily have to return to base to do your shopping. And one of the elements for this system is the risk reward that we really want to exist in everything that you do with the Paragon. So in this example, the usage of drop pods is you're going to want to try and find a tactical place to summon it. It's going to come in over time. Someone else, if they find it, could destroy it and then puts it on a longer cooldown. So though you have a more flexible ability to shop, mm -hmm. it adds a different element of strategy as you decide when's the right time, what's the right place, should I have teammates there to help me defend it, should I go and actually try and ambush someone as they're trying to use it. So we're playing with this right now to see how it's going to change player behavior and it's one of the things that we're excited about in, in these bigger changes that we have coming in the future. All right. And more on the glimpse into the future as the stuff that we're working on now and sort of figuring out how we're going to roll it out over time. This week, we started with a draft matchmaking system. So that's the beginning of that. We're very curious to see how people are going to be interacting with it as of today. Um, we've been very pleased to see within the community people are running their own tournaments. That's something that uh, I think feeds into the sort of competitive nature of the game that, that we've been trying to foster over time. Uh, our community and design teams are working towards our designs for ranked play that will eventually be rolling out. And as always, replay has been something that has been really exciting within the team because it was actually driven by our networking team. Those are the guys where a lot of them have been doing it for years, and if networking is going well, you don't notice it. And so this is the first thing they've gotten to work on where it's very visual and they were excited to see people reacting and using their tools in the tool set. So it's been great to see people sharing their great plays broadcasting, tournament footage, uh, putting together highlight reels. So we'll be continuing to work on the replay system and the time back into competitive play. Yeah. So, and so that's pretty much our overview. Okay.